starts now. It just sounded like a great big old crack of thunder. And uh, I came out of the room and saw the tree down and was like, holy crap. <laughs> Tonight on the edge, the summer of storm strike again. They weren't widespread this time, but some packed a punch taking down this right here humongous tree in Madison Heights this evening. Neighbors couldn't believe their eyes when they came out and saw the tree uprooted and at Milton and Cynthia. What a mess. Heavy rain has also flooded several portions of I-94 tonight on the east side. You're looking at live pictures right here at I-94 and Connor. The freeway has been closed for several hours. Now, there's the live pictures. It's also closed at Vernier and also at 8 Mile. It's not over, fo uh, over yet, folks. No, and the chance of storms continues, we're told, on Wednesday. Captain Rich standing by with what we can expect. Uh, Taryn Roop, yeah, we still have thunderstorm chances for the rest of tonight and for tomorrow. Notice low pressure is spinning over northern Michigan. This low pressure is going to drag a cold front across the region tomorrow late in the day. So once that occurs, then we have a long, dry stretch starting Wednesday night, lasting all the way into Monday. But notice clusters of storms here in lower Michigan. There are some additional storms. Storms on the Canadian side of the border, certainly in the uh, northern portion of Michigan. How about wet weather around Gaylord? 66 degrees there right now. Let's close in and show you the storms that we've been watching. They've been coming and going, especially in the northern suburbs. Right now, active weather right along the St. Clair River on the east side of Lake St. Clair. And then a line of storms near Battle Creek, Lansing, up to Saginaw. So we're not done yet. Notice these heavy downpours around Algonac. And these are all heading off to London, Ontario. Notice just this swath of darker green north of Detroit. That's where two to three inches of rain did fall, including around Warren, St. Clair Shores, and the Gross Points. No active flood advisories now. They did expire at 11 o'clock. 85 and 65. Look at that rainfall total at Metro Airport zero. There was no rain at Metro Airport. It's hard to believe if you're watching from Warren or Clawson where you got dumped on tonight. 64 Ann Arbor, 67 Mount Clemens, 67 in Flint. The dew points are still up, so it is muggy, but the cooler numbers are off to our north. 61 there in Marquette. So watch our latest frontal boundary. There it is, and there it goes tomorrow evening. That lowers the humidity, lowers the heat, and brings fair weather for the rest of the week. You'll see it in the seven days. Spotty storm still tonight, down to 67. A couple of thunder showers coming and going tomorrow, 82. And then there's that great stretch of weather Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. More humidity, and then more storm changes chances into early next week. Warmer numbers as well. How about a full check at 4 a.m.? Just came like boom. Just came in and boom and there we go. Warren couldn't escape the wrath of Mother Nature either. A large tree came down during the storm on Palm Beach Drive. This one you can see smashed a parked SUV on the street. But fortunately no one was hurt. Also tonight, as the luggage piles up at DTW, travelers' frustrations are also on the rise. Last week's crowd strike global outage continues to have lingering effects on the air travel industry. And now Delta Airlines is under federal investigation for its response. Let's get live to Fox News' Jessica Duke. She's live from Metro Airport with a look at where things stand now. And Jessica, it's a welcome sight behind you, a sight for sore eyes. Not too much of a crowd, but it is late. Yeah, Roop, this is maybe classified as the calm after the storm. The situation behind me, this quiet situation here at the Delta Terminal, definitely not representative of what thousands and thousands of travelers have been dealing with since last week. I mean, seriously, some people have been trying to get home since last Friday, still have not made it. And the baggage situation that you mentioned here at the McNamara Terminal, it's unbelievable. Don't get too close to me. I've been wearing these clothes since Saturday these same clothes, as has my husband. Sarah Thomas's bags made it home to San Fran, but she stuck at DTW day four. She smelled fine, by the way. I thought about everything from hitchhiking <laughs> to flying to Frankfurt. That's Frankfurt, Germany, speaks to the desperation. You just feel like you're, you're alone. We caught her coming outside to look at birds, something to get her mind off what's inside. That's a massive baggage graveyard here at the Delta Terminal. I feel very unlucky to have been caught in this in this sort of Delta apocalypse of 2024. It's not just Delta. Spirit passengers with horror stories, too. It was the worst airport experience I've ever had in my life. 
I'm not a spring chicken. Karen Lalonic from Newark, wheelchair bound, stuck in her wheelchair for a day and a half, twice, once in LA, again here in Detroit. I'm waiting since 8 p.m. last night. After her flight home got canceled five times, she decided to take a flight into Detroit. I have nothing to do with Detroit. I have nothing to do with, I'm sure it's lovely. I have nothing to do with Detroit. But it's, as you said, it's east of L.A. That's good. Travel agents can barely keep up. Pioneer Travel says the worst call they've gotten so far, three siblings, all minors, stranded in Boston, trying to get home to Florida. But of course, the parents are, are freaking out as far as what they can do. There were no flights down to Fort Lauderdale, down to Miami. Delta abruptly halting their unaccompanied minors program, bumping kiddos off flights. Just with the staffing, with the cancellations, with everything else, they just couldn't afford to have unaccompanied minors flying on their own right now. There's too many other things going on. Delta's cancellations trending down at about 500 canceled out of 5,000 flights on Tuesday, but total resolve could take days, even weeks. Meantime, tips if you're flying, try carrying on, not checking bags. Check in early and arrive early. I would say at least three hours before flight time, at least. Consider getting a travel agent involved next time. So we have special numbers that we can get through to the airlines. We're professionals. As you mentioned there, Rube, uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation announced today that they are launching an investigation into Delta's handling of this whole situation. We reached out to Delta. They said they are fully cooperating with that investigation. Now, one of our Fox 2 viewers reached out with some good recommendations. She says that you should buy yourself an Apple tag, throw it in your luggage if you are going to uh, check your bags. That way you know where your bags are, even if the airlines do not. I just checked. They're $23.99 on Amazon. Reporting live from DTW. Jessica Dupnak on the edge. Yeah, let technology work for us at a time when the airlines can't. You know, uh, Jess, are there some flights more at risk of cancellations than other ones? In theory, Roop, the, the direct flights that have been uh, over the last couple of days and in the coming days, those are usually safe. It's those connecting flights that have been an issue. And the problem is, according to the travel agents, is that most of the flights, at least for Delta standards, were about 90% full to begin with. So trying to get people on the next flight out has been nearly impossible, which is why, you know, five days later, we're still in this situation. Well, we hope you exit the uh, right door and head back instead of getting a flight to a, uh, a more pleasant place uh, with all the storms we've had. Jessica Dupnack with us live tonight. Thank you. When you're in these jobs and something catastrophic happens on your watch, a former president almost being murdered live on television for the world to see, I'm glad she decided to do the honorable thing and resign. The director of the Secret Service, Service has re officially resigned after an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Director Kimberly Cheadle is coming off a brutal hearing Monday on Capitol Hill where she was hammered by lawmakers. Cheadle initially refused to step aside but gave in to growing pressure today. Lawmakers continue to hold hearings on the assassination attempt. Tomorrow they'll hear from FBI Director Christopher Wray. I pledge to you I will spend the coming weeks continuing to unite our party so that we are ready to win in November. Vice President Harris has quickly built momentum in her campaign for the presidency. Today, she spoke to supporters in Wisconsin just days after Republicans held their convention in that key battleground state. The VP has already raised more than $100 million for her campaign since Sunday when President Biden announced he was stepping aside at the end of his term. Harris has also secured enough delegates to be the party's nominee, including delegates here in Michigan who approved her tonight. Insiders say her running mate list is short. It appears to be between Arizona Senator Mark Kelly and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Both represent key battleground states. Meanwhile, President Biden is set to address the nation for the first time since announcing he was dropping out of the race. He'll give remarks from the Oval Office tomorrow night at 8, and you can watch it live right here on Fox 2. The president has said he intends to finish out his term and has since thrown his support behind Vice President Harris for the Democratic nomination. And tonight on The Pulse, we're taking a deep dive into Harris's campaign, including record fundraising, some newly formed campaign strategies, a closer look at where she stands on the major issues, 
and how she might win over undecided voters in Metro Detroit. It's all coming up at 1130 right here on Fox 2 After the Edge. An emergency on Lake St. Clair as a driver crashes into the water right there in St. Clair Shores. And as Fox 2's Dave Kinchin tells us tonight, it was an act of bravery by a young bystander that saved that woman's life. Chaos on Lake St. Clair and Gross Point Woods Tuesday afternoon. The car goes probably about, I would say, 14 yards, 15 yards far away from shore. 15-year-old John Agnello went from trying to catch bass and walleye at Lakefront Park to saving a life in seconds. I'm just fishing, knowing I mean, nothing crazy, and I see a... I hear a loud noise, but douche. St. Clair Shores police say an elderly woman had just driven into the water. So then I run over there instantly with a neighbor. He's out with his dog. We both get in there at the same time. We just both swim into it instantly. All she was doing, just I got there, she was like this. I wasn't talking, I was like, do you need help? Come on, let's get out. We convinced her to get out. At one point, he says he thought someone else might have been in the car. The first thing I thought of in my head is pick up a rock. I grab the windshield, I mean the window, back window, smash it. And I, I go in there, can't really see, it's blurry. I feel around, can't feel anyone. Then I go over the car, got a few cuts, not a big deal. Go to shotgun, I feel around, there's no one in there. He says he was running on pure adrenaline, not even noticing the cuts that required his leg to get bandaged up. I couldn't even feel the cuts because I was so, like, locked in, you know what I mean? My family taught me to take action, not just, like, stand there, go on my phone, simple stuff like that. That's how they raised me, so... I mean, that's not what I did. Police say the woman behind the wheel was taken to the hospital for evaluation. Meantime, John's family is absolutely beaming with pride and gratitude. We couldn't be more proud. When I heard today, um, I was working from home and cried. Like, I was just so proud of him. I'm a first responder, been in medical my whole life, and I, I just, I'm so proud of him. I think we found his career path, and I can't wait to watch him yeah. grow and blossom. So proud of you, John. Thank you. Witnesses on scene said the elderly woman seemed to be doing okay in the moments after that rescue. We don't know how she's doing right now. As we mentioned, she was taken to the hospital for observation. We would love to see a reunion between her and John after this whole terrifying ordeal. Dave Kinchin on the edge. Oh, what a hero. Well, Downriver Mall is on the market. Cranes Detroit reports the Southland Center is now for sale. The mall is located on Eureka Road between I-75 and Telegraph. Southland was reportedly put on the market after a defaulted loan. It's the latest local mall undergoing changes following sales of Fairlane Town Center in Dearborn and Oakland Mall in Troy.